Today on Sister to Sister, we're going to tackle a problem. And here's what it is. I have a friend, a Christian, who feels very hopeless. I can't wait to hear what the sisters are going to say. Wow, that's a good question. What about this? Is there partying in hell? Uh, I'm not going to be invited. Mm, me either. <laughs> Stay tuned. Well, hello and welcome to Sister to Sister. We are so glad that you joined us today from wherever you're watching, we're so grateful. But you have joined five opinionated, and they are women of God. And we answer the questions that you send in from a biblical point of view, right from our hearts. And you'll see that in one minute. Okay, so, well, this is a really good one. And you wrote this, you wrote, if we are new creations in Christ, why do we keep sinning? Oh my gosh, good idea, good question. Wait, is that the question yes. of the century? Yes. Why do I, Why? what did Paul say? What I shouldn't be doing, I'm doing, and what I need to do, I'm not doing. Yes. Um, Romans 6, it says this, um, actually Romans 8, those who are motivated by the flesh only pursue what benefits themselves. Mm -hmm. But those who live by the impulses of the Holy Spirit are motivated to pursue spiritual realities. For the mindset of the flesh is death, but the mindset controlled by the Spirit finds life and peace. And I think like, what is the mindset? What are you pursuing? What are you motivated by? What are you thinking about? Because what that train track is, is the direction that you're going to head. Okay. So like if you're, tr if you're, if you're pursuing righteousness, you're pursuing peace, you're pursuing joy, you're going to find life. If you're pursuing, you know, darkness and bad thoughts and destruction, you're going to find death. Yeah, that's good. So it's, good. it's a mindset. Yeah, it is. Why do you think we keep sinning, girls? Who else has one? Well, I have another Romans verse because Romans is my favorite yes. book of the Bible. Um, and it's so, so fitting, Romans 7, 25. So then I myself serve the law of God with my mind, yeah. but with my flesh, Come on. Right. I serve the law of sin. Yeah. And so it's a constant battle. We yes. are humans mm -hmm. of flesh and it's a constant battle mm -hmm. between and Paul said it, like, why do I do the thing I do not want to do? It, you know, with my mind, I want to serve the Lord, mm -hmm. but my flesh is weak, you know? Right and up. so sometimes we are imperfect sinners and we allow that flesh to overcome that mind. And so, you know, mm -hmm. we are not perfect and we do allow that flesh to overcome what we want to do in our mind. And that's why we need the Lord. Right, right. Because we are not strong Lord enough on our own. Right. right. We are not. And so we need the Holy Spirit. And that's why the Lord gives us the Holy Spirit yeah. that we can call on at any time. And that the Holy Spirit is with us to help us to overcome the flesh. Yes. That's right. And you, you said about the mind, because the battlefield really is in the mind and that's why we sin but the answer is found in the pages of the bible so there's no other way there's no other way than reading the words of god and he will help you what do you got you know i often think of the scripture that talks about you know um my flesh it needs to die daily mm -hmm. oh, and that used word. to be a part of our prayer life yep. lord what's uh, in me that needs to die today let it die and my mother the lord used to say let it die dead where can't res be resurrected <laughs> yes. you know let it die, <laughs> let it die <laughs> dead <clears throat> or it cannot be resurrected mm -hmm. but you know the scripture also talks about this is let no man say he is tested of God. You're tested so that you can see what's inside of you. So sometimes, you know, what the enemy meant for bad, Ugh. God will use it for good. That's right. mm -hmm. And we are human. And yes, but that doesn't give me an excuse to no. put flesh. I have thoughts, you know, sinful thoughts, um, sometimes sinful reactions or responses, yes. but I don't have to put flesh on it. Right. Right. But it is a process just like Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, yes. right? You know, um, mm -hmm. he was the word wrapped in flesh. And when he got yeah. to the Garden of Gethsemane, it was like, look, if there's another way for this to be done, right. let's do it, let's you do know, it. but mm -hmm. nevertheless, your will. And so there is that constant dying to self yes. and right. dying to flesh. And make it real dead. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Roxy, what do you have? Why do we keep sinning? 
Yeah, because we are flesh and we are spirit. Mm -hmm. And we are both. That's right. And only mm -hmm. Jesus was perfect flesh and perfect <coughs> spirit. That's good. And the, the scripture that she's talking about, about dying, is Galatians. Mm -hmm. I am crucified with Christ, but nevertheless I live, but not I, but Christ lives yes. through mm -hmm. me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. Teach. So we have to allow mm. Christ to live through us That's right. and we have to live by faith, right. not by our flesh. That's right. And how do we do that? Well, when you see the cute girl walking down the street, you don't keep looking. When you see Hold the cute up. girl, you've got to make a turn. <laughs> right. You've got to de decide yes. to make a change. And yes. maybe the mm. first time you won't, maybe okay. the second time, but you've got to keep moving mm -hmm. toward the Spirit. I like yeah. that. And like she said, yeah. it's a, we're tested. Yeah. We're tested. Our flesh tests us. Yes. But yet we've got to keep making the pro Proverbs talks about it. Young man, don't go down her street. Don't go out at night when you know she is there. And I'm speaking to the young woman right, too. Right, right. But right. anyway, I'll go on because I don't want to keep though. going on. That's really good. That's, <laughs> that's really good. Yeah. See, I hope you're Avoid hearing. Avoid it. I hope Avoid you're hearing it. what right. what Roxanne is saying, and I hope you um, listen to this question too because this could relate to many of you. I have a friend. Um, what do I say to my friend who's a Christian and she's hopeless? She's hopeless, and I tell her, read the Bible. What do we do? I think a lot of times people quote that Jeremiah 29 um, verse, right. you know, I know you have a, a hope and a future, right. but um, I love this Proverbs 23, 18 verse. Surely there is a future and your hope will not be cut off. Amen. Like I love that verse. And the, the story that I love to share is the one um, of, and I'm, I'm, her name is escaping me, but it's the handmaiden that, is that has to run away um, and Hagar. Hagar, yes, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And she is just a young yes, teenage woman who is pregnant. She's, mm -hmm. you know, she's a single um, woman and she runs into the, the woods. She's about to die. She's literally, you know, about to scary. die. And she just, <clears throat> she <throat> cries out to the Lord and she says, El Rohai, yes. the God who sees, sees. me, yeah. because he spares her, he reaches out to her, he yes. loves her. Yes. And I love oh. that name for the Lord, El Rohai. He is the God who sees, sees me. Yes. And for those feeling hopeless, God sees you. Oh, Even yes. when you feel like no one else sees you, when you feel your loneliness, you, the lowest and hopelessness, yes. God sees sees you. So good, Corey. Thank yes. you. That, Thank you. That is wow. just my favorite name for the Lord. Yes. El Rohai. And there's a song. Was her name McMullen who sings The God Who Sees? Mm. Wow. It'll put you on your knees. God Who Sees. He sees you. Yes. He sees yes. you. I thought you about have? too, like, hopeless, define hopeless. Is it, are you going through a trial, a tribulation, mm -hmm. or is it hopeless, like such a deep despair that it seems irreversible? Mm -hmm. And if it, there's, there's two kinds of hopeless, like this just seems, it's like a light and a real heavy, two differences of hopeless. But all, what I would all say, of the above. all of the above. above, what I would say is Second Corinthians, we are hard pressed on every side, but mm -hmm. not crushed and perplexed. Mm -hmm. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, not abandoned. So good. Struck down, but not destroyed. That's great. So there, that, that little light of hope is what's going to lift your spirits right. back up to keep your head above the water so that you can, you can see God. You can, he does yeah. see me. He does love me. He does know me. So I would say never let that little light of hope darken down. Do not let Satan oppress you so much where it looks like there is no future, no hope, total despair, and it's totally irreversible. That's a lie. With That's God, right. all things are possible. That's right. I was going to say there's a mustard seed story, which you probably know. Yeah. Nothing is impossible. Flo. 
So Romans uh, 15 and verse 13 says that, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Yeah. And so when I find myself in a place of hopelessness, there usually has been where the enemy has tried to rob me of my faith, of my joy, of my yes. strength. And, and I love that we're, we're quoting scripture and, and we understand the power of the word. But one of the things that I am learning in this season is another refresher course on being the word. So if I am, mm. uh, you are my friend and you are dealing with a hopeless situation, one, let me encourage you that your, it, that your situation isn't that unique, but I have to be very gentle with That's that right. because yes. I don't want you to feel like I'm downplaying right. what you're going through. But if I can show you that you know, there are other people dealing with that too. That kind of helps lighten the load. The other thing is let's encourage you and remind you, you're not alone, Roxy, I got you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, um, remind you about God's love. But most of all, what can I do to help? Because I am my brother, I am my sister's mm -hmm. keeper. Yes. And there are a lot of things that I have found that we will put the word on, we will even put prayer on, but we won't put legs on our prayers. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. And God uses people. And we've got to be mindful of that. Amen. I love wow. that. I Can really I love that. Can I dovetail that, that with the scripture? Galatians 6, and this is what I thought. It's funny that these questions come up when you're going through a problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People, we're going through these problems. Yes, and the, right. the producer totally. you know, gives us these questions. Galatians 6 says, carry one another's burdens. That's right. That's right. So last week I was like, okay, Lord, I'm not going to lay my head down on this pillow one more time and think about all the hopeless things I can't take care of. Hopelessness gives you that sense I don't have control. Right. I can't control this, so it's out there and I can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. I'm hopeless. So the Lord said, carry somebody else's burden, you Roxanne. You know, so I started praying. Everyone that came to my mind, laying on that pillow, came to my mind, people, things, places. I kept praying, praying. You know what happened? I'm lifting other people's burden, as she was talking right, about. So what can we do Put besides legs. praying? Yep. And my burden, I fell so asleep. Good. Yes. <laughs> oh, Roxy, that's so good. I love you that. Put us, legs. Love a sweet rest. I love that. Put legs to your prayer. And, and I'm going to come. Roxy, well, I've got you. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> this is an interesting question. Uh, practically speaking, what does it look like for husbands to love their wives as Christ loved? the church? You know, Good it's, question. it's kind of, uh, my husband is so lovely and so uh -huh. loving. It's not fair that I answer this question <laughs> uh, uh, because there's people out there that aren't as loving, but we go through our things. So I'm going to say this, communicate to understand. And how did Jesus do that? When he communicated something, he was waiting to see if they understood and he asked questions. So husbands, wow. when wife says something, you either sometimes don't answer at all. Well, you didn't ask me a question. Right. I'm not gonna answer, my husband would say. I said, just acknowledge that you know I said it um, or vice versa for, him, for me to him. So I would say, ask a question. So what does this mean scripturally? Mm. A fool takes no pleasure in understanding but only in expressing his own opinion. So we have these times in marital relationships where we do not communicate. We expect, we think they know, or we don't care if they know, or we have lost, as we talked about, hope in the situation. You have to keep talking, keep communicating. I like that, I like that. Who else has, as Christ loves the church? We have been doing a, a series of weddings. It's just one wedding after another with all these young couples. And I love it because, and, and now Buck and I are both doing them together. And, you know, we go through the Ephesians and he addresses, you know, husbands, you know, love your wives. And, you know, as Christ, as Christ would, the yes. church. And it's like, husbands, love your wives as Christ. He gave himself for her. Amen. He died for her. He sacrificed, he took the hit for her. 
And I just think, I, I watch the young men saying these words, I'm thinking, he has no clue. <laughs> you know, no, no clue. And I'm telling you, wives, submit and support your husband. It's like, it's, it's, you grow, you grow and you learn and the husband, I mean, I watch so many times my husband will sacrifice for himself for the benefit of the family. It's like over yes. and over. He's like, I died a thousand deaths. I just, yes. I die to what I want and I do what I have to do for my family. I get up every day, show up at work. I work hard for the family. Work. It's like, he's not just doing that for himself. He's, he's got a family mm -hmm. and a wife. So mm -hmm. it's a lot of dying to self when you get married. Well, what, what Roxanne started to say, I can identify with so much. So how can husbands love their wives as Christ loved the church? He, yes, he died for us, but guess what? He puts us first. Mm -hmm. Christ puts us first. Our problems, he cares, he hears. And that's what my George does. And he watches this show. So he's gonna say, why do you talk about me all the time? <laughs> <laughs> because George, you put me first. You put me first, and I will never be able to, I try, but I'm not able to do what George does. He cooks for me, he cleans for me, he drives for me, he gets my clothes ready, he packed my lunch before I came today. If I have a headache, he gets me the ice pack. Now when he's sick, I try to give him a Tylenol, and blah, 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 blah. I just applaud husbands who put their wives first, and yet wives, submit to your husbands and put them on the pedestal that they deserve. And that's all I have for you today, George, and all of you too. We'll be right back to wrap this up. Welcome back. Where do you hear this next question? And I'm not gonna go off on a tangent on this one <laughs> because I am not going to hell. <laughs> Listen to this. What do I say when someone says, hell is where the party will be? So what is hell, Flo? What even is it? I mean, well, I know. It just give me a little grace to bounce back to that question um, that we just had because oh. that can literally be a hell. Yeah. If you have a man that is trying to love his wife like Christ loves the church, um, and in today's society where both people work, as you kept re referencing, mm -hmm. he works, he does this, but nowadays both, both people yeah. are working. Right. And to yeah. be able to surrender yourself to the point that you are so selfless and, yes. and loving and re ready to yes. basically just die to self and to your own will. Mm -hmm. But then you have a wife that is like that dripping noise Ooh. on the rooftop, Ooh. you know, we have to learn how to be helpmates. Now, let me come back to, you know, this, this here about partying in hell. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, oh, Lord. I know there's parties in heaven and I can give you scripture for that. Right. Every time a soul gets saved, yes. all of heaven rejoices. Now, sometimes we have these little colloquialisms that we say all the time, you know, well, I'm going to hell because that's where the fun is. No, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And for some of you out there who will appreciate this, this train is bound for glory, this train. This train is bound for glory, this train. And then it goes on to say how this train will take nothing but the righteous and holy. Mm. So I don't think that people should be thinking in the mindset of I'm going to hell and this is where the fun is going to be because yeah. that, that's a lie from the pit of hell. They're right. deceived. That's right. They're deceived. Mm. Uh, you want to go to prison for a day? Hey. <laughs> Going to a, I mean, a, a earthly prison for a day. You're separated from God. You're separated from your loved ones. You're separated from the things you care about and want to do. I mean, earthly prison, you don't want to be there. How could you ever think hell is better th than that? That's right. Right. I don't no. know. I, sometimes I think prison for a day might be nice, though. Someone's making you a meal three times oh, a day. Oh. I could sit in peace and read a book. And I don't know. I, I, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, no. I was recently at a funeral, and there was this, this older gentleman going around making sexual, rude, crude remarks to all of the women, and my daughter, myself. I mean, we're all just like, 
you're kidding me. Like you're all like you're close to knocking on the door of eternity. And um, and he made the comment to my daughter and I. He goes, "Hey, if I'm going to hell, I might as well just have fun." And Gloria and I looked at each other. We're like, "Listen, we've been in the rooms where people transition yeah. from life to death. There is a, an un." explainable peace in the room yes. when the child of God is going on to glory. I mean, many times you will hear them saying on their deathbed, I see angels right. and yeah. I see, yeah. I, they're yeah. asking me to come. Um, my husband was in the room where somebody was screaming, no, and yelling mm. on his deathbed wow. as he transitioned. There is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. It's my not God, a thing to be God. playing games with. You ask any ICU critical care nurse that even atheists in their very last breaths will call out yes. to God. Yes. The God of, they don't, right. their whole life. But there is, there is something that happens at that moment of life and death. So I would not be playing games Hell is fun. We're going to party in hell. Let's live hell on earth. That's not funny. That's not good. We need to get our lives right. The, these, these days are unusual days. These days, something is happening on the earth, happening in the skies, happening in the church, happening in America, in Israel, and it's a time to be aware. Wow. Thank you, Amy. Thank you so much. We all needed to hear that. I appreciate that so much. And in our last question, we all need to hear this one too. What does it mean to be righteous? I mean, righteous. Well, I mean, you just sang the song about the righteous being taken to glory. Um, righteous means, uh, you know, the, the dictionary definition to be free from guilt and sin. Okay. Mm -hmm. But what does the Bible say about being righteous? Romans 3.10. Again, Romans. We're bringing oh, Romans in oh, here, God. baby. <laughs> Romans. Oh, Romans 3.10. No one is righteous. No, not one. On. Okay, but but God doesn't leave us there. Amen. Okay, Romans six twenty three. For the wages of sin is death, but the yeah. gift of God is eternal right. life through Jesus Christ, His Son. Amen. Okay, Amen. so none of us is mm -hmm. righteous. Every single one of us is guilty. Every single one of us is sinful. But the gift of God is eternal life. Amen through his son. So we all can be righteous through him. And that is the only way. I, what does he say? I am the way, the truth, and the life. And that is the only way we can be righteous. That God can look upon us because we have the blood of Jesus covering over us. Amen. And that is the way we cannot go to hell, but we can go to heaven. Beautiful. Right. I love it. Do you have a scripture? I bet you wow, do. That was too powerful. That was so powerful. To touch powerful. Romans is, is too much. Right. Uh, when I think of it, uh, there is a scripture, 2 Corinthians <coughs> 5, God made him who knew no sin mm -hmm. to be sin for, for us, us. Mm -hmm. that we might be made the righteousness of God. As Corey said, we're not righteous on our own. It's his righteousness. That's right. And righteousness reminds me of justice. And it reminds right. me of purity. So only God is pure. Only he can look on purity. Only he can accept purity in heaven. And none of us are pure. So as Corey said, he sent his son. That was his justice. Right. His son took the sin on his own body so that we can be made the righteousness of God, not on our own, as Corey said. Right. And I heard someone tell me one time that righteous means right standing. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. that, so that was good. So sometimes I didn't mm -hmm. understand if someone said, oh, you're so, act so righteous. But that's kind of like being self-righteous, right? right? Mm -hmm. And then it was explained to me, and I'm explaining to you, that righteousness is right standing because of what Jesus yes. did Amen. for Amen. us. Amen. We'll be right back. We are going to wrap this one up. <laughs> we are. We close with this scripture, Psalm chapter 71, verses 19 through 21. Your righteousness, God, reaches to the heavens. You who have done great things, who is like you, God? Though you have made me see troubles, many and bitter, 
you will restore my life again. From the depths of the earth, you will again bring me up. You will increase my honor and comfort me once more. God promises in Hosea chapter 2, I will make the valley of trouble a door of hope. Mm. And he sends his son and Jesus proclaims, I am the door. Those who enter by me will be saved. And they will go in and out and find pasture and care. But the devil comes, the evil one comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus says, I have come in John chapter 10 to give life and life abundantly. Jesus is the door of hope and restoration. Let's receive his comfort, his care, his salvation. What does Psalm 23 say? He leads me into green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. That's Jesus, our shepherd. Allow him to lead you in the path of righteousness. Amen. Well, I loved that. And I also love the scripture that we always end with. And it goes like this. As iron sharpens iron, so does the countenance of a man or a woman, and in this case, a sister, sharpen the other. Because you see, family, these girls are telling you about righteousness. They're telling you about God's comfort. They're telling you about how to have peace. And there is one way, and his name is Jesus Christ. See you next time.